This video helps to answer the question, why an analog oscilloscope today, when I have a modern DSO oscilloscope like the Hantac shown here in the video? And some of this is going to be uh, subjective, right? It's going to be my opinion and, and not really a matter of scientific measurement. And the other is going to be stuff that I, I simply just can't get past uh, limitations of the modern DSO oscilloscope that I require the Tektronics to do stuff with. So I've prepared a couple of examples to demonstrate these in this video. Again, I'll reiterate, this is a video that talks about the virtues of the analog oscilloscope. So I'm not going to go through all of the features of what the Hantac does. I've, I've done videos about the Hantac, and we know all the magical things that the DSO could do that the analog cannot. It might in fact be the lack of features in the analog oscilloscope and the persistence of vision, the fact that it has a cathode ray tube, that makes it an invaluable piece of equipment. We'll find out. We find that for a lot of things, the digital oscilloscope could obviously keep up with the analog oscilloscope, but for certain things uh, to match what the analog oscilloscope could do, a digital oscilloscope would become increasingly expensive, almost exponentially expensive, to accomplish uh, certain visual tasks that an analog oscilloscope could do quite easily, in consideration of the fact that an analog oscilloscope costs next to nothing on eBay, and a digital oscilloscope uh, to do certain capabilities that you would expect could run you upwards of $1,000. It's something to consider. Consider that right now I have a 2 megahertz sine wave going to both oscilloscopes through the probes with no modulation and no bandwidth filters on them. And both oscilloscopes can display them just fine. We could see that uh, the top one shows a bit more artifacts than the bottom one. And it's probably a more accurate representation of noise than the bottom one. The bottom one appears a bit more subdued. If I go and turn the bandwidth filter, the bandwidth limiter on, we can see the bottom one uh, becomes more defined, more cleared up, just in the very same way. If I turn the limiter on on the top one, it also becomes cleared up. And they, they both pretty much look the same at that point. So to produce um, this type of sine wave without modulation at this setting with this type of uh, horizontal setting, you know, both pretty much can do the same thing. If I turn on modulation, we'll notice that things start to change quickly. I'll turn that on now. We can see that on the bottom, the representation of modulation looks very clean. The top oscilloscope has a lot of trouble trying to display this properly. As you can see, I could improve upon the top one by adding a degree of manual persistency to it. It allows for the uh, waveform to take shape very much like the bottom one. However, uh, it does provide me sometimes more information than I need. I think a lot of this has to do with the way that it's triggering um, this particular waveform. Again, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if I want to look at, at a modulated signal like AM, I would be reaching for an oscilloscope to pull up something like this and not something like that. So now we're going to completely change the uh, time domain here and take a look at the product of what we have and see what we have going on. I'm going to start with the top one. This might look more familiar like a uh, AM carrier. I think I'll leave it there, like like six six of them in the screen. And, and maybe I'll, I'll lower the contrast just a hair, if I can. Right, so it looks better on camera. And that's AM, and, and the problem is we've got this, this shadow over it because the persistency is not set to auto. So now I have to go and set this persistency back to auto so that clears up. And that is the best I could get for actually looking at the AM. But if I go to the bottom, we'll take a look at the bottom now. And now I'm going to come around the other side and I'm going to set the hold off for this. Now I'm going to lower the intensity just for the camera so the camera can see it. And that to me, that to me is far superior in my opinion, and, and the camera doesn't really capture it 
you know how I, how I'm capturing it here you know not looking through the camera but yeah that that's a night and day difference in quality let's see if I could zoom in on these two so this is the DSO with the modulated signal And this is the Tektronix with the very same signal. In my opinion, the Tektronix is superior. Again, this is subjective. This is just my opinion. In the spirit of full disclosure, I actually did have a technique that I made a movie about a couple of years ago to improve upon, uh, very specifically, the display of the output of uh, an AM signal, uh, as shown here. And I'll touch upon that right quick because I do want to be thorough and say that it is possible yet somewhat uh, unorthodox for the purpose. When you consider, in fact, that uh, to produce an output like this, I merely have to, you know, connect the signal to an oscilloscope. Uh, for the DSO, however, it's going to require a technique. I'll display that now. I'll point out that I'm doing this to try and uh, show this display, though, in order to do that with... Uh, any detail it's going to mess up the background of this so don't worry about that so in order to improve upon the original output the first thing i did was switch from uh vectors to dots which cleaned up the visual display somewhat obviously it doesn't really do anything as far as stabilizing it and, and basically what i did was i took the trigger and dropped it all the way to the very top or bottom of the waveform right and i realized that this is not not perfect but it would it would allow me to have something to work with here and then I could take the contrast not the contrast I could take the um, it's on page one the wave intensity and then I could dial that up appropriately and that was like as about as close as I could get to representing you know like a, I'll compare it to the analog that's as good as I could do it. If I wanted to revert over to FFT right quick to look at the signal on the spectrum, it looks like garbage because dot mode doesn't look good on FFT. So then I'd have to jump over to display and then I would have to take something like this and, and convert it back to vectors if I wasn't on that setting, but then I'd be moved away from whatever setting that I was using. So you have to do a lot of fiddling with this oscilloscope just to be able to make uh, that modulated signal look halfway decent. So it's possible to get halfway decent if you do a lot of extra work. Yeah, it's possible, but you know, I wouldn't. My opinion. So when I want to look at uh, signals going through an old tube amplifier or radio, analog equipment, that sort of thing, given the choice, I would reach for the Tektronix oscilloscope. That's just my thing. But if I need to look at those signals and know what the frequency is at the same time, know what the voltage is and all sorts of information and calculate the delta between uh, the beginning and end of a sine wave and have that information all up front while I'm working on it, I reach for the hand tech. If I needed the oscilloscope to also act as a sort of quasi spectrum analyzer and have that FFT capability, then obviously I'd be reaching for the hand tech. You know, because it would just be more convenient. But at the end of the day, if I was looking at output signals, if I was hooking something up to the Hewlett Packard harmonic distortion analyzer, you know, to, to view the signal uh, incoming and outgoing, I would hook up the Tektronics. I wouldn't hook up the HandTech. I wouldn't be dealing with refresh rate and persistency and, and dot pitch and resolution. I would just be looking at pure analog output and that's it. That's my opinion. There's nothing scientific to back this up. It's just my personal choice. But let me get over to something where I can get the hand tech to work at all in any possible scenario where the Tektronics works just fine. When I did my restoration video of the semiconductor curve tracer and subsequent usage of the semiconductor curve tracer, I found it extremely difficult to get it working with the hand tech. And even when I did, to actually get measurement values off of the hand tech wasn't really, you couldn't really do it. You could do comparative measurements by, by putting two transistors in this unit and, and flipping back and forth from left to right, but you couldn't, you couldn't really measure anything. And one of the reasons was, was just because it was, it was all over the place. It basically, it looks like crap on the XY mode on the hand tech. And, and that's the reason. And I'm going to, 
uh, display it. What I've done is I've managed to connect both oscilloscopes at the same time to this unit uh, through this transistor who's hiding right over here. And we can see the um, curves, characteristics of this transistor as displayed through both oscilloscopes simultaneously. Let's take a look. From far away, they might seem similar. You know, uh, it's the same signal that's going into both oscilloscopes. They're both set up the same way for this. When you start to get closer and realize that you may actually have to take measurements based upon these signals, uh, things start to fall apart. There seems to also be a, a loop that's formed coming back on the one that goes to the hand tech that does not exist on the Tektronix. Another thing is due to the fact that the Tektronix is a CRT, again, viewing it on the camera hardly does it justice. But let's take some close-up views of this and, and see what we're looking at. I should also point out, before we take the close-up, that the reaction of the Hantac versus the Tektronix when making changes to the sweep voltage is entirely different. They're definitely not the same. You can see that the Tektronix is, is really fast in its updates. The Hantac kind of has a delay to it. I have to be really careful when I when I torque this, lest I blow up the transistor, but I'm in a very low setting here. Horizontal sensitivity is cranked all the way up. But yeah, you can see that, that the, the, the Tektronix is, is actually in real time, and, and the hand tech is about, about just over half a second delay in any changes that are made. Let's take a look at the signal. Here's a close-up view of the trace on the hand tech. You notice it's nothing more than just dots, and and there's they loop back and they move around a lot. It's it's you can't actually take an, a really good accurate measurement. Like I stated, the delay is also not very helpful. The funny thing is, it's actually set for vectors on the display, so making the uh, setting shift over to dots would probably bring about a different look, but it probably wouldn't be better. Dad moved it over to dots just for fun. It didn't really make any difference. It just made it more dottier, which I guess made it more uniform, but it didn't really help anything. They're not lines. They're, they're dots. There's significant loops coming back on here, the kind of loops you'd expect to find on, on uh, uh, AC coupling, but it's DC, so. By comparison, extremely accurate measurements can be taken with the Tektronix right down to the individual graticule uh, based on horizontal and vertical measurements. This is something that could not be accomplished on the other oscilloscope. Therefore, in, in this particular scenario, this is the only oscilloscope that could be used when trying to do curve traces on transistors. So I'm gonna state again that this video is entirely subjective and entirely my opinion and not based on any fact. This is just what I choose to work with based on the equipment that I have. And I'm going to get responses that say, oh my God, you're totally wrong. And I'm just going to delete those responses. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, but for those who wanted some insight into which oscilloscope I choose to use and when, if I'm dealing with analog signals, I basically go with the analog oscilloscope. If I'm dealing with an old piece of gear that necessitates using the analog oscilloscope, I use the analog oscilloscope. If I'm taking a lot of separate measurements at the same time, including frequency and amplitude and delta and FFT, I use the modern oscilloscope. If I'm doing digital related um, uh, troubleshooting like uh, computers or ICs or whatnot, I use the modern oscilloscope. And a lot of times if I'm traveling somewhere and I don't feel like schlepping the big Tektronix with me, I'll use the modern oscilloscope. And that's basically what I do. Uh, the Tektronix is, I like having on the bench. I don't like moving that thing around. It's kind of old and it's, yeah, that, those are my oscilloscopes and that's when I use them. And thank you for watching.